All right, yes, you're welcome to the Balanced Diet of Teletainment this morning. Of course, with the way things that happen for inside our country, uh, mental health is not something where we really need to take seriously because the level of people, we just sit down, especially youngsters of nowadays, just they sit down, uh, think, say, life don't get meaning anymore. So, therefore, they need to take their life because they feel, say, if they did this world, they actually they useless. But if they come out from this world, um, life feel they better for people um, where they where, where they don't leave behind. And they make people they wonder and they ask questions. Say, is that the only way to go about? And we they always talk and say suicide is on never an option for anybody in this world. Because if you calculate them, they say now about one million people then they die from suicide every year. And by the year 2020, that number will increase to 1.5 million. That's why they always bring you documentaries and will bring you reminders. Say, I beg, if you need to talk to somebody, there's always someone available, whether a counselor, whether a friend, whether a stranger, somebody they will go listen to your situation. All right, moving on from there, we get another, another documentary, but this one, a person, the person come in person, come inside the studio, him, now the person will sit down, they do documentaries, and this what they do for over 10 years. Now, this particular documentary they talk of, you don't catch, catch international attention because um, out of over 300 movies, um, this particular documentary, it be they selected for the 76th Venice uh, International Film Festival and the movie or uh, documentary, because now 11 minutes um, film, they actually talk about or they remind us of um, the 112 missing girls talking about the Chibok girls. We're going to need to watch the trailer of the daughters of Chibok. When they told me that my daughter, Rifkatu, was among the girls that were kidnapped from the school, I could not believe it. What did I do? Who did I offend? Many women lost their daughters that night. We were all confused. Before this time, nobody even knew we existed. We've cut to my daughter. For five years, I have wept and waited, praying for you to return. I will not stop praying for you, Refugat. I will never stop. And I know that one day my prayers will be answered. Daughters of Chibok, and inside the building, we get the producer of this virtual reality documentary in the person of Dwell Kachi Benson. Welcome to the show this morning. Thank you. Now, looking at this, um, looking at this documentary, they bring us back to the situation of the Chibok girls. 112 of these girls see they miss. It's over 1,200 days since these girls they be done colobi them from their schools. Mm -hmm. And from this documentary, what you do so you actually work her go um go chibok town actually mm -hmm. tell us your journey what did make you actually decide to bring this story up um i mean right from the time we then talk say then kidnap these girls five years ago you know say when they first talk them people don't believe you know government they talk one thing international media they talk another thing local media they talk another thing so you know for me as a filmmaker the matter just tired me because I don't even understand how people just take enter one village, carry almost 300 girls. She had to take care of them. She had a motor, she had a truck, she had a plane, you know. So from then, I don't make up my mind. Say, anytime I get opportunity, I go like go to achieve or think I go find out for myself. So I've been making another documentary in January this year, and the the project carry us past through Chibok. So I tell my guys, say we will stop for here. Make we even just speak to the people. And, you know, as we enter, you know, we follow them talk, the men, the women, the young girls. I just know, say, I know we'll fit to come out here without telling this story, you know. But really, how easy be they to, to get these people to actually tell you their story? Because we don't they hear, say, different people don't try to go there. Mm -hmm. And um, it did, like, say, they've been taken advantage of at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. So how, what be the, was there any form of resistance when they be they tell you their story? Yeah, I mean, initially, um, there'd be no one talk. Then you just talk, say, look, people don't they come here for five years now, never bring back our children, so we don't get time to yarn with anybody. But me, I explain to them, say, look, 
not going to understand say, first of all, me, I not be from this area. I'm from the east. I don't get any, what do I call it now? I don't get any personal, you know, attachments to this community per se, you know. But as a Nigerian, I feel say, when a story needs to be heard. So the only thing I want to do is say, I just want to use my medium of filmmaking, take amplify when our voices. So that they go here when because when I'm inside this place now, they complain, they cry. People know they hear. But using the medium of film, you know, people go fit here on our voices. And, you know, so we spend like one or two days. And I get one very nice assistant, you know, where they speak their language. So she self also put mouth for the matter. You know, and I think after a couple of days, we just realized, hey, maybe these guys are genuine after all. And, you know, they can't say, okay, no, wahala, if we follow our women talk. Now looking at um, looking at the school, because I know so you go to school, you mm -hmm. go, to, you actually took a tour around Chibok Town, mm -hmm. uh, the school, the premises, the boarding facility. You see all these things. Mm -hmm. You may feel say the the attack could have been avoided if all things were to be equal. Well, a lot of things they happen for Nigeria we we don't understand. So we'll add that one. Join all the things where they happen. There is there are very few things that are. Unavoidable, you know. So, uh, personally, me, I feel say if to say the right amount of security there and all of that, it will not happen. But remember, say, Chibok na place, we say we never even hear about them before then. You know, I just this far away place, I just so, you know, I mean, I, I just think that um, since between then and now, other things don't happen that could have been avoidable. Shibu, see, they talk about, we just talk about Leah Shuaib now. You know, after we happened for Chibok, they never go to schools, go carry other girls, carry boys. So it's just uh, the state of security in the nation. Um, many things are avoidable, but uh, they still end up happening anyway. What do you do now? Okay, so now um, we're not in a very, in a quite a sensitive situation for mm. inside our country, and mm. even the government, they still they try their best to do what they need to do. Yeah. But let's talk about the production of your movie now. Yes. Um, how many days did it take for this documentary to be done? This 11 minutes documentary. Uh, so the first time we shoot for one week, so we can't come back Lagos. I mean, I can't go through the footage. We are like, say, get some kind of things out for like still shoots. One time my guy said, oh, we'll to go back to Chibok again. Wow. We'll go back again. No? Uh, there be no one gree, but no man, no man. I forgot to talk now. Everybody go say, okay, no problem, sir. So after they don't try to convince me, say, me could not go, and I say, no, I won't go. So we can't still end up going again, spend another one week again. Um, and then we can't come back. So after I come back, I just, because it was a very emotional shoot for me. You know, it was, it was a very... It was a very emotional shoot, so I just leave the matter for like maybe a month before I can go back, can start to the edits. All right. Now looking at looking at um, the work where you don't do, and now the international community actually recognize your work. What mm. be the what do you feel be the procedure for anybody where they do documentary or do film to actually get recognized? Because <laughs> out of over three hundred <laughs> movies, yeah, no, really, that's serious. But out of over three hundred <laughs> movies, your documentary uh, was selected and actually won an award. Mm. What, why you feel say um, you were qualified or your movie was was qualified to, to uh, get it? Me, I don't get for mine. Say my movie they qualify to win anything. I just wanted to tell an honest story. So. Remember, I said I don't do documentaries for 10 years. Two years ago, one of my guys tell me, say, Omo, send your film, go film festival now. Yeah? So they see other people's films, you know, send your own, go. But I tell and say, look, when the time comes to win an award, it will happen. You understand what I mean? Um, so my advice to anybody or whatever is just, just, just keep telling your stories, your honest stories. Honestly, that's the only thing. This Venice festival is... This one we will win now, now. Now the first time ever where they come this country. Now the first time where that, that award they come this continent. But I, need, I didn't plan for it. Even when they tell me, me I was shocked now. All my mind is that they go Venice, just... When they tell us that they don't select the film, we don't already happy say our more achievements. Okay, no, wala. We just go Venice, just go meet people, interact with them. Then they can't tell us they can't win award, join. So I don't win the award. Me, my, I don't move on. I think of the next thing I want to do. Mm. Beautiful. Just chase the stories, keep telling the stories honestly. The accolades will come. If they don't come, 
it's fine. Your gratification be say you don't do the story to the best of your ability. You don't move on to the next project. All right, now let's go back to, to, to Chibok now. Now looking at, because for the documentary, mm -hmm. I noticed say the land, they very dry. And I know, I know say their source of um, income or mm -hmm. whatever job they do not farming. Mm -hmm. Now how this, um, this movie now, how it don't they influential enough in the lives of the women, the mothers of these daughters, we um, still never return home. How have they recovered? Have they moved on? Uh, so, you get one scene for the movie. The woman, as with the full and talk, you just bring out one Ghana must go bag. Come bring it, they bring out clothes. All this clothes she bring out, now her daughter clothes, the one with them, with them kidnap. You tell us, say, every month that they wash these clothes, dry them, put them back inside her bag. That kind of person never move on. So I know they, they can't move on. Because, you know, say, if, if they tell you, it's okay, picking don't die. At least you go, no, it's okay, you don't die. Matter don't end. You move on. This is what we say, it's missing. So, I mean, how do you move on? That's to answer that question. On the angle of how their life be, you don't see the farm. Then be farmers. Their annual yield, we say they make in a year, now like maybe eight to ten bags of beans. Even if, even if beans, say it matter, don't, it don't expensive, and then sell one bag for 30,000. If you multiply 30,000 times 10 bags, that's 300K for one year. So what do they use this film take do? We say, we they show them to people, take and take raise money, so that we feed, help them with fertilizer. Because they don't get fertilizer, they don't get pesticides. So now you make the, their yield. And the land next to so nothing. dry, yeah. because from where we see so, you understand? It, it, like I say, it's very difficult yeah, to it's move it's cultivate. It's like desert, you they, you they, you they cut. So if you, if you put fertilizer, put pesticide, maybe get them cow, we go feed, they help them till the land, all mm. those kind of things. So now what do they do with that? Um, even before we go Venice, we we'll don't raise more money, so we can't help like 10 of the women. But 112, we won't help. That's the mothers of the ones where they where still they missing. Because we feel, say, now them, their matter even was pass, you know, picking they don't see, money they don't get, you know. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, we show them to different places. As we don't come back so now, we plan how we want to do screening here and there. So that will remind people, say, look, oh, yes, as we wait for the girls to come back, make we remember, say, <laughs> then get parents, then get mama, and those their mothers get other children as well. Mm -hmm. These now women, we say, they know they born one or two. You feel say Nigeria don't move on from this story because looking at it, it's five years old yes. as we speak. And mm -hmm. the energy and the passion where people get five years ago mm -hmm. on top of this story, we know they to see them again. Yeah. You feel say Nigeria don't move on from this kind of story? Well, many of us don't move on, really and truly. And not be say we move on because we day wicked. We move on because of say many other things don't happen since then. So sometimes you can get uh, what's it called now, jaded. You know, you just too many bad news, too many things. Which one I won't even focus on, you know. Um, but I don't feel, say, you know, me and feel say if we, if we so easily move on, we sort of lose our humanity. You understand? Um, I don't feel, say, they're right, say, we could just move on like that. So this thing, this film, just serves as a reminder. You understand? Because... Like I said, I don't blame anybody for moving on. Plenty of things don't happen since then. It's five years ago. Which is why one of the things they didn't tell me for Venice, the jury, say, ah, thank you for using this film to remind us. Because five years ago, all of us carry hashtag, bring back our girls. The whole world, they shout. But five years later, you'll be like, say, the matter don't die down. Everybody don't move on. So I, I think it's important that we keep reminding ourselves. You know? And as filmmakers, people, they create content. We also use our content. They, they remind people, bring things to the consciousness of people. Mm, very That's true. the most important Before thing. I go ask where, where people forget the virtual reality documentary, this 11 minute documentary to watch, I would like to ask, if you get an opportunity to sit down with the president of the Federal Republic <laughs> of Nigeria, uh, would it be that one thing where you go want to make you do for the mothers of these girls? <clears throat> no, uh, for me, I think, from what me I see, I think that it's important that the, whatever we feel do to make their lives a little bit easier, make we do them. <clears throat> you understand? You'll be like, so imagine this now. You meet woman, say, okay, ah, the woman, maybe your husband don't die. You go see the woman. You don't go tell her, sorry, they go now. You go, say, okay, madam, okay, wait, okay, make her give you money, make her pay for children's school fees, make her pay your house rent, you know, make her life a bit easier. 
That's all. I feel say if we make these women their lives a little bit easier, you understand? It go it go it go calm them down small. Then say gonna say that this okay, this women care about us. But if you just fashion the matter, blank everybody. I don't know if you say they right. So I say, ah, well, I beg. If we fit give them fertilizer, pesticide, give them power, they don't get light, all those kind of things. Make their life a little easier yeah. as the day they go by. Yeah. Now, um, looking at the kind of movie, your style of movie where you actually do, mm -hmm. um, this particular one, we actually win this award in a virtual reality. Mm -hmm. And in this part of the world, virtual reality is not so popular. At all. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's quite different. Yeah. Why <laughs> you decide to work on top of that road, knowing fully well, say, mm -hmm. you enter a movie, <laughs> one for passion, <laughs> the other one to announce enough for profit, at least to put food on top table will last, last. So why are you on the route of virtual reality? What make you work on top that on the top that level? Um, I don't know. So virtual reality, I just started last year. Okay. Not be say now it's not to do all my life, you know. But I just feel say now a very powerful tool to communicate stories, because once you wear the headset, it will be like say you did there, you did the place. So if that this Chibok film now, for instance, if you wear them, you go feel they look like say you did inside Chibok. And I feel say it's very important to tell that kind of story in virtual reality because a lot of people don't they hear about Chibok, they never go there before. Even for this Nigeria, what would they? Even for I get people for Bonu State, because Chibok they Bonu State. You get people for Bonu State, we never even go Chibok before. So the question was, okay, so how do I bring Chibok to everybody? How do I take everybody to Chibok so that they go feel sittings for themselves? It was it was a very simple answer. Use virtual reality. So, and because we don't they do, we don't they experiment with them before, it was easy for us to say, okay, yeah, carry go, let's, let's do it. And I don't regret that decision one minute. Beautiful. Yeah. So now this project is done and dusted. What's the next? What are we on to? I don't know. I get plenty of ideas from my head. So I go bounce, I go bounce on with my guys and we'll go decide what's next. But whatever it is, it could be an honest story that I'm passionate about. Beautiful. Um, so why people actually get this, um, the documentary, this 11-minute documentary, Daughters of the Chibok? Uh, they will just need to just, you know, follow us on our Instagram, then it's send it's our, it's so the handle is at VR360stories, yeah, at VR360stories on Instagram, or at Kachi Benson, which is my own personal handle, handle. yeah, okay, Kachi. So VR360stories. Yeah. Yes, plural. Yes, or, or at Kachi Benton. Yes. On top of Instagram. Yes, so they then care. they just send us a message. We organize, maybe they'll just come to our studio, come watch them, or we just, you know, let them know when we do our next screening. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's such a beautiful story you don't give. Um, hitting home um, the situation, the plight of the people, the mothers, especially of um, the girls from yeah. Chibok. Uh, with no hope, say this kind of thing will ever get to repeat itself. But thank you for the good work. Thank really you. do well done. Keep it up. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.